Half a decade of uninterrupted violence, 370,000 deaths, and more than 11 million people displaced from their homes. That's like the entire state of Ohio, and there's no end in sight. Syria devolved from peaceful demonstrations opposing an authoritarian regime in 2011 to a full-blown civil war. It's seen the rise of the Islamic State and outside superpowers drawn into the carnage. The result? The biggest humanitarian crisis in the world. So here's the situation. Since 1966, the Alawite minority, an offshoot of Shiite Islam, have been in power in Syria. This despite the fact that Alawites represent just 12% of the Syrian population. The Sunni Muslim population, however, represents around 60%. The current president, Bashar al-Assad, an Alawite, took over in 2000 after the death of his father, Syria's longtime ruler, Hafez al-Assad. Cut to 2011 and the Arab Spring. The world watched as uprisings in Tunisia and Egypt quickly toppled their respective dictators. Inspired by these events, Syrians took to the streets to protest the oppressive rule of Bashar al-Assad. But instead of stepping down, Assad violently crushed the peaceful uprisings using tanks, artillery, and gunships. Many of the protesters responded by arming themselves. That's when the conflict took on a sectarian nature. Sunnis from other parts of the Middle East, like the Saudis, threw their backing behind the rebels. Shiites, like the Iranians, gave their support to the regime. Meanwhile, the jihadists of the Islamic State, which used the turmoil to seize territory, attacked both sides. Then there are major powers like the U.S. and Russia. After a poison attack in 2013, the U.S. and Russia cooperate to get U.N. inspectors to destroy Syria's known chemical weapons. But in general, the two powers have skewed in very different directions over this war. Simply put, the U.S. is against Assad and Russia supports him. Russia has used its U.N. Security Council veto repeatedly to protect the regime. Both countries are actively fighting inside Syria against Islamic State and an al-Qaeda spin-off in the name of combating terrorism. But Russia uses the terrorist tag to bomb other groups opposing Assad, including rebels supported by the US and its allies. Finally, there are the Syrian civilians in the middle of all of this. Devastated by the fighting and destruction, Syrians are fleeing by the millions into neighboring countries, straining resources and creating a global refugee crisis. Now here's the argument. The US and Russia agree on the need to end the war, but not on how. For years, the U.S. has insisted Assad must go, but has since softened its stance on the dictator in the interest of the broader fight against the Islamic State. Meanwhile, Russia says it wants to keep Syria sovereign and independent by backing Assad. Several efforts to resolve the conflict through negotiations have failed. Neither side has had enough of an advantage in this war to get the other to compromise on terms for peace, nor has either been willing to do so for the sake of Syria.